So we're familiar with the idea of a Green New Deal. But if we want to put environmental protection and social justice at the heart of our politics, we need to move towards a Blue New Deal. Mensen zitten in hun eigen vuilnisbelt. Dan liggen ze op het strand en als je gewoon om me heen kijkt, zie je de, de plastic bekers en de plastic flesjes en de peuken en de luiers. Dus je vindt echt heel veel luiers bijvoorbeeld. En mensen maken een kind en dan gooien ze de luier in de natuur, terwijl die luier zit een gel. Dat gel zit menselijk resten in. Als dat in de zee komt, weet je 100% zeker dat dieren dat gaan opeten. Dat gel dat verstopt in de maag en die dieren gaan dood. Dus je maakt een stuk toekomst door een kind te maken en je gooit een luier in de natuur. Dus dat is best wel ziek. Maar Ralf Groenheide en met Treasure Hunt gaan we met zoveel mogelijk mensen de natuur in om zo snel mogelijk, zoveel mogelijk schatten, andere mensen noemen het afval, uit de natuur te halen. Zodat wij weer een schoner en ik geloof daardoor een gezellige aarde krijgen. Mijn zoon is inmiddels 15, maar toen hij twee was zijn wij drie maanden naar Costa Rica gegaan. Een plek waar ik vaak ben geweest om te surfen. En op dat paradijselijke strand, want dat is het paradijs, ging hij in plaats van al die mooie schelpen, ging hij allemaal dopjes verzamelen. En na drie maanden hadden we een vuilniszak vol dopjes, hebben we een mooie zon van gemozaïkt, weer opgeruimd. En eenmaal terug in Nederland ging ik gewoon heel erg nadenken van ja, hoe is het als mijn kinderen mijn leeftijd zijn? Hoe is het dan met onze leefomstandigheid en wat heb ik een gedrag aan te doen? En ik heb gemerkt dat gewoon het heft in eigen handen nemen een onwijs fijn, uh, helder gevoel geeft. Vijf jaar geleden denk ik of zo, voor toen er nog geen statiegeld op de kleine petflesjes zat, hebben wij een levensgrote walvis gebouwd op Scheveningen uit 10.000 kleine petflesjes. En dat was echt om een kleine ondersteuning te geven aan uh, kom op jongens, laten we uiteindelijk statiegeld op de kleine flesjes krijgen. Het zit er inmiddels op en omdat wij in de zomer dus alles tellen op 40 categorieën, waaronder dus de petflesjes, kan ik zeggen dat we 90 tot zelfs 95 procent minder van die flesjes vinden. Het zijn kleine veranderingen en daar geloof ik heel erg in. Je kan niet meteen de hele situatie boom veranderen, want dan word je een soort van politieagent. Maar wat kunnen we vandaag veranderen? Wat kunnen we in een jaar? Wat kunnen we in tien jaar? En eigenlijk is iedereen welwillend. We kunnen het veel sneller met z'n allen opruimen dan dat we het hebben laten dichtslippen. Dus ja, ik geloof dat dat kan. We are pouring huge amounts of plastic into the ocean. Since the Second World War, the production of plastic has increased dramatically. And lots of it ends up in the ocean through rivers. Cleanup campaigns are becoming a, an everyday occurrence. So it's a small part of a much bigger environmental crisis in the ocean. So climate change is creating major problems with the warming of the ocean, acidification of the ocean, plastic pollution. And farming is creating all kinds of pollution problems in the ocean with nitrogen leaking into the ocean. One thing we find in Northern Europe is an enormous dead zone when the use of fertilizers in agriculture causes runoff into the ocean. It spurs the growth of algae, and the algae eventually dies and sucks all the oxygen out of the water. And when this happens, we see the death of thousands and in fact millions of fish and dolphins and porpoises. We really find the emergence of a, a sterile, barren ocean. So it's just one part of a, a bigger, multifaceted environmental crisis. The ocean has lots of really vital roles. So one thing it does is it, it moderates temperatures. So if we didn't have the ocean, the, the poles would be much, much colder and the tropics would be much, much hotter, probably uninhabitable. It dries the oxygen cycle, so absorbs lots of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, locks away carbon, releases oxygen for us to, to breathe. Now, when I went to school, I was told that the, the rainforests were the lungs of the earth, but actually we now know that the ocean is really playing that, the biggest role in, in driving that cycle. So we can be, I think, misled by the fact that the ocean isn't going anywhere. Clearly, it's, it's not going to disappear anytime soon, but its ability to perform these really important ecosystem functions is, is under threat. So as well as the environmental crisis, which the ocean faces, we also face what I call a second crisis, which is a crisis of inequality. And there's all kinds of reasons why actually the ocean economy is even more unequal than our economies back on dry land. Lots of ocean industries are extremely expensive to enter for a start. So lots of countries just don't really have the, the capital to build up their own ocean industries. It's also the case, of course, that some countries don't have coastlines or have very small coastlines. Other countries have very big, fertile coastlines. One of the big ocean industries is, of course, fishing. 
fishing has become highly industrialized since the Second World War in particular. So we have these boats that, that have nets that are more than a mile wide or many kilometers wide, or long lines that stretch for 20 or 30 kilometers. And this is the kind of technology that of course poorer nations can't really afford. So often we see a, a picture where boats that are based in richer countries of the world end up fishing in the waters of all poor countries and, and undermining the ability of those countries' coastal communities to feed themselves. So for one reason or another, the, the ocean economy seems to be the space of accelerating inequality. So I believe we need to fundamentally change the way that we approach the ocean. We tend to see the ocean as a place where we can go and exercise our freedom and extract whatever resources we want and have whatever environmental impacts that we want. And I think we need to switch to a completely different picture of the ocean, which recognizes the fact that it's our most important ecosystem and our biggest ecosystem, and switch is the default, if you like, against extraction. So that's where the idea of what I call a Blue New Deal comes in. People are, I think, familiar with the idea of a Green New Deal, which says something like, we need to tackle environmental and climate crisis at the same time as tackling social deprivation and inequality. And I think those discussions are really important, but they often have a big blue hole in them. The, the ocean is the biggest ecosystem out there and it's vital to decarbonizing our planet and having a, a fair climate transition. So I think the idea of a Blue New Deal has three core elements. We need to recognize that coastal communities are often relatively deprived. We need to recognize that they are disproportionately likely to be affected by problems like climate change. But we also need to recognize more positively that they have enormous potential in easing green transitions. So I think the key is to look for sustainable ocean industries that can support good jobs, help regenerate coastal communities. So a good example of a sustainable ocean industry might be, for example, seaweed farming. So seaweed farming has a very small environmental footprint. You don't need to use fertilizers or pesticides to grow seaweed. In fact, it's carbon footprint is negative, it absorbs lots of carbon as it grows. It also can help protect coastal communities from storm surges and extremes of weather. It can also act as a, a nursery for wildlife in coastal ecosystems like seahorses and other um, examples of marine biology. There's a real question about where Blue New Deals come from and who can drive them. And I think the driving force has to be each country because each country owns its own slice of marine territory. So the challenge, I think, is to find ways in which individual countries can find the resources and the political commitment to drive their own individual Blue New Deals. In some cases, we have countries that already have the resources to do this, they just need the political will. In other cases, especially in the Global South, I think there's a big picture for unlocking financing at the global level that can help these poorer countries to steer through their own individual Blue New Deals. I think it's really, really important to take a step back and think about what kind of ocean we would like in the future, rather than allowing the future to unfold as it will, which is likely to mean that it's driven by powerful economic actors. So what kind of ocean do we want? I think we want an ocean in which human well-being is protected as opposed to the corporate bottom line. So how can we reflect that in our politics? How can we put the social bottom line closer to the heart of ocean politics? Human. Thank you.